to the two. Sorry. Ah. Okay, today I'll show you guys the Wikipedia way to do zero double factorial, and you guys will see that this is equal to square root of two over pi. And it's documented on Wikipedia, so you guys can actually go check it out. Okay, you can see the link in the description. And first of all, we have to extend the concept of double factorial. And first of all, we are not going to be using n; we'll be using z. Okay, so this is just the usual style that we do it. Let me write it down: z double factorial, and let's recall the definition. Of z double factorial, this is the same as saying we start at z, right? And each every time we go down by two. So the next one we will have to multiply by z minus two, and then z minus four, and so on, so on, so on, right? And now suppose that z is an odd number. This means we will just multiply, multiply until we reach five, and then times three, and then times one. Let me just write down three times one. But notice, if you multiply by one, of course this is like you know, doesn't really matter. So we can actually erase the one. Why? You can ask Wikipedia. Okay. But anyway, let's take a look of this. This is like a definition of z double factorial. If z is odd, right? Now let's make a connection. I want to make a connection with the regular factorial. And remember, the regular factorial is that we must have something and then times that thing minus one and then nothing minus two and so on, right? Hmm. This is minus two minus four. Well, this is not bad because check this out. Let's divide this by two so that you see this is minus two over two. That's minus one. And likewise, let's divide this by two, and we will produce the minus two, right? And likewise, we can produce minus three and so on. So it's going to that order, right? And let's just divide everything by two, like this. And of course, as you know. If we divide a bunch of twos right here, we have to figure out how many twos that we just divide, and then we have to multiply by two to that power so that we can maintain the same value, right? All right. The best way to do this is to show you guys with an example. So let's take a look of this example right here. Okay. So suppose that z is an odd number, and let's just say seven. Let's take a look of seven double factorial. This. Means that we have to do seven times five times three, isn't it? And we don't go to one because we are just following that. And we are going to multiply. We are going to divide each and every number by two. And now you see we are dividing three twos. That means we have to multiply by two to the third power so we can maintain the same value, isn't it? And now let's make a connection between the seven and three. How can we get three from seven? Well, seven minus one is six. Six divided by two is three, right? <laughs> okay, so you guys, I uh, you know somebody's going to come and whatever you guys want. But anyway, right here, our input is z. So the power right here, it will be z, and then you minus one, and then divided by two. We have z minus one over two many twos that we just divided. So we have to multiply by that many. So that's the power for that. Anyway, this right here is still z double factorial. And now let me rewrite the following. I will just keep this term as how it is. This is just still two to the z minus one over two, right? And then the next factor is that we will multiply by z over two, like this. And then we multiply by. Now this is z over two over two. Sorry, z minus two over two. We are going to just do this z over two first. And then minus two over two, which is the same as minus one, and that was a strategy, right? And that was the purpose. And now it's actually happening, so it's excellent. Next one, it's three over two, and then minus four over two, which is just two. And you can imagine the next one is going to be three over two minus three, and then so on, so on, so on. And then we just put down dot 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 until the last one, which is three over two, like this. Okay. So so far so good, and hopefully you guys see that this right here should remind you the regular factorial, right? But the problem is that we have the c over two as the input, so it might be slightly unusual. But this is just how it is. Okay, now, in order for us to extend the concept of the double factorial or the single factorial, we are going to be using the gamma function. Okay, unfortunately, the pi function is not as famous, so we will stick with the gamma function. <laughs> so let me just make a note right here for you guys. This is one of the properties that we need 
from the gamma function. So recall that when we have gamma and let's say we have whatever input that you want, okay, you can put on z, you can put on x, you can put on n, whatever. And if you add one to this, this right here is equal to, you pay attention to what z is right here, and then just have z times gamma of z, like that, okay? Well, in order for us to actually bring out the gamma function, we have to look at this backwards, okay? Because at the moment, I cannot legitimately bring a gamma function to you. This is how we are going to do it. As you can see, the last number right here is 3 over 2. Take the 3 over 2 as this d right here. What we are going to do is, we are going to multiply this by gamma of 3 over 2. Because if I multiply this by 3 over 2, sorry, gamma of 3 over 2, this pair out with this 3 over 2, we can get gamma of 3 over 2 plus 1, namely gamma of 5 over 2, right? So this right here will give you gamma of 5 over 2, right? And likewise, you can imagine that this right here, we will have 5 over 2. When we have 5 over 2 times gamma of 5 over 2, you can produce gamma of 7 over 2, right? And you pretty much can then just keep pair this up until the very last one, all right? However, before you do anything else, be sure that when you multiply by this, and this is a number, we have to divide it by the same number. So let's divide this whole thing by gamma of 3 over 2, like that, okay? And once again, this is gamma of 5 over 2, and so on, so on, so on. And imagine what do we get if we combine all this together. Gamma of 5 over 2, gamma of 7 over 2, gamma of 9 over 2, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the input is going to be gamma of uh, this and then plus 1. Of course, minus 1 plus 1 just 0. So you have whole thing right here becomes gamma of z over 2. Okay? So all this part right here becomes nothing but just gamma of z over 2. And if you put this, multiply by that, you get what? Once again, you have z over 2 here, z over 2 right here. You can produce gamma of z over 2 plus 1. So now, this is the cool part. And let me just write this down nicely for you guys. This right here, we still have the 2 raised to the z minus 1 over 2 power. And the top is just, let me just multiply this right here, gamma of z over 2 plus 1. Once again, it's because of this z over 2 times the gamma of z over 2. And you look at this backwards. So we have that. And if you really want to follow Wikipedia, they rewrite 3 over 2 as 1 half plus 1. So this right here is the same as gamma of 1 half plus 1. Uh, you don't need to do the steps seriously, but you know, whatever. Um, anyway, now let's do some clean up. This right here is equal to, let me just write this down first, okay? And I'm going to split the power down for a good reason, you guys will see. Let me write this down as 2, and then this is like z over 2, right? And then when we minus 1 half in the power, it's the same as saying multiply by 2 to the negative 1 half power. So this and that are equivalent, right? And now let's take care of this. What is the value of gamma of 3 over 2? Well, you guys should have seen my video, hopefully, right? So let me make another note right here on the side. When we have gamma of 3 over 2, this right here is the famous factorial, namely 1 half factorial, and you get the famous number, square root of pi over 2. This 2, it's not inside the square root, okay? But anyway, we do have that number in the denominator, so we will have to take this and multiply by the reciprocal, right? So it becomes multiplied by 2 over square root of pi. And lastly, of course, we still have the gamma function, and if you would like, you can write this down as z over 2 factorial. But let me just keep it as the gamma function. So gamma of z over 2 plus 1, like this. Okay, so we can do a few more things from here. For example, we can take care of the exponents. Let's see what we can do, okay? First of all, this is like, you know, 2 to the negative 1 half times 2 to the first power. 
And when you multiply, of course, you add the exponents. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. And you have positive 1 half plus that, right? And now here's the deal. The over 2 in the exponent, it's just like the same as taking the square root, right? So for all this right here, I can put it down in the square root. And in fact, pi is in the square root already, so I'll draw in everything in the square root. So what do we have? On the top, we have 2 for the base. And then we have z right here, right? And once again, the, the over 2 over 2, um, this is actually going to be the positive 1 half power. Okay, so this becomes 2 to the 1 half power. This right here was taken care of by the square root already. So we just have z and 1, and you add the exponents like this. And then we have the pi inside of the square root in the denominator, so we can just put it down right here. Okay? And then we multiply by the big boss, the gamma function. So we multiply by gamma of z over 2 plus 1. So this right here is a good definition for z double factorial when z is odd. Okay? And let me just write this down for you guys nicely. Now, if you would like to extend the concept of double factorial to the even cases, this is what we can do. We are just going to say that z equal to 2 times some other number, so that you can ensure that you get the even case. Okay? But anyway, you plug in 2k into z, so on the left hand side, you have 2k and then double factorial, and this is going to be the square root of 2 right here, and then the z is now 2k, and the plus 1 is also in the exponent, like this. And then we divide it by pi inside of the square root, and then multiply by gamma. Okay, plugging 2k into z, 2 and 2, right? This 2 and that 2 will cancel, so we just get k right here, and then plus 1, like this, alright? So, if you would like, you can take this as the double factorial for the even case. Well now, that k to be 0, 2 times 0, it needs no introduction, we get the 0, double factorial, okay? And then, this is equal to, we have the square root. We have 2 to the 0 power, so we just have 2 to the 1st power on the top right here, right? So we just have 2 to the 1st power, 0 plus 1 like this. And then we have the over pi. And then we have the gamma of 0 plus 1, of course it's just 1. And gamma of 1, this is actually equal to 1. In the end, we are saying that 0 double factorial is equal to square root of 2 over pi. Right? This is really cool and it has been documented by Wikipedia, so it must be kind of legit, isn't it? Anyway, hopefully you guys like this video and if you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe. I like to make math videos for you guys. And as always, that's it!